realizes she's she's being duped, becomes aggravated, annoyed by this man, picks up the bottle, throws it at the ground, and he either creates this massive boulder or just lodges a boulder that then rolls to the black sorcerer, crushes him to death. So her she created the boulder or his magic created the boulder? So either the fact that the, when she threw the potion at him, when the potion like shattered on the ground, either created this massive boulder or it hit a boulder that dislodged it, which proceeded oh, okay. to roll towards him. Okay. So it crushed him to death. But apparently before it crushed him to death, he put a curse on the town. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it checks out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so before he dies, like, I curse his town. And apparently, when I die, I'm going to curse yeah. this town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pit, yeah. As is, you know, this boulder's crushing yes. him, I guess. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mysterious Pals Show, a show about pals, history, and mysteries. My name is Chris, and I'm joined here by my best pal, Jordan. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Great. I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to see what you have today. And on that subject, today is going to be a Jordan episode. He's going to be presenting a mystery to us. And what do you have for us today? Today, we're going to be talking about Bangar Fort. It's a fort in northern India. We're going to ask what happened to this fort. What happened at Bangor Fort? Yes. Okay. Bangor Fort, northern India. Yeah, near the border of Pakistan. And what, I guess you're going to tell me, what uh, kind of time period are we talking about here? When when was this? So I came across this after we did our first episode, which you all should check out, the, uh, that Chris led about Henry Avery, the famous pirate. I was doing some research afterwards. I didn't know too much about this region, the subcontinent of India during this time. So I was looking up some stuff about the Mughal Empire, and I came across this abandoned fort. And no one knows what happened to the people. No one knows what happened to the fort. So I thought that was kind of fascinating. Mughal, not mogul. Mughal, yeah. Okay. Did I say mogul? No, I got okay. I'm, I said it the last episode all the, the whole entire time. It's hard, man. It's mogul, a different language. Mogul. It's fine. Mughal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, this, there was a fort there that was pretty uh, that was flourishing during this time. It's pretty neat. Uh, but what happened was people just disappeared and the fort kind of fell apart. So there's always mystery around what happened to this this particular site. So what type of what type of fort are we talking about? Uh, this fort was built for Mado Singh. He's the second son of Bhagwan Das. He was a ruler of Amber, which is kind of modern day uh, Rajasthan. Uh, so Amber was like the kingdom. Yeah. Well, was, so during this time, uh, the Mughal Empire is basically controlling all of India. But even though they're Muslim, they kind of let uh, already people who are already there, they were Hindu, other little like, I don't want to say fiefdoms, but they kind of let them do their own thing as long as they paid homage to this this Muslim emperor. So they, the Muslim empire kind of let the Hindus keep doing what they're doing as long as they kind of work some kind of thing out where like you help me out, I'll help you out kind of thing. So they're kind of left for the most part to their own devices uh, but so this is a, a a primarily Hindu site where a lot of temples were built for Hindu gods and goddesses. Uh, at this particular site, there were homes. Uh, there's a lot of entertainment here. It wasn't just a particular fort that you would picture like in the in the Middle Ages, where it was just like we're fortified, we're locked in. But there was actual like an actual town in this area. Yeah, I always feel like when you when you talk about like castles and forts especially from the medieval times and uh that era they're always like you think it's always this like you know the lord of the rings style like giant spires and <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and yeah. like and then you really actually look at like what actual forts look like they were or these castles that they called them and forts at this time it was kind of like really kind of boring Sparse, and yeah boring yeah this and just because it was yeah. needed for one specific reason also sure. technology wasn't there to build these giant things yeah with, and this was like mostly stone and brick, but they did have a lot of nice amenities. Like they did have people living there at that site around like 1720-ish. They probably had about close to 10,000 people living there. So it wasn't just the soldiers, you know, posting up there. They had all these people had really nice homes. There was markets for like trade and, and all that stuff. Uh, they had like entertainment district kind of thing. Um, what year was this? We so it was built, sorry, it was built, started being built around 1573. So the last okay. quarter of the... Uh, 16th century and uh, but unfortunately right around the 1700s people just disappeared 
And there's all speculation about what happened to these people and why what happened in this fort and the town that was in it. Okay, so, so that's the mystery. How many people are we talking? A town's worth about ten thousand people. Okay, so it wasn't. So we're not ju- talking like a hundred people. No, no, yeah, it wasn't just. It wasn't just like a grown out kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but it was. It was like a thriving town. Uh, so it wasn't just militarized, but there were actual people living there, living their daily lives, usually in peace. But it was also a fort, so it was used for war and battles and stuff like that. So it was heavily, it was pretty heavily fortified. Apparently, there, you, you mentioned, I'm sorry, you mentioned Roanoke, and it's funny. I was just there past summer, and it's you're like oh, thinking, right. yeah, yeah, you're thinking that it's like this crazy. Uh, you're like, oh, Roanoke's going to be have some like something there. And it's just like Massive. some trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, this is where they were. And you're just like, what? Like they built some stuff afterwards. You can have parties and right. stuff there. Like, but like it's just a pile of trees or like a circling of trees. And you're like, this is where they we think they were. This is where the store, the words were, the, 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 the inscription they found yeah, or whatever. Yeah, true, yeah. And so it was like super, I was kind of, uh, you, know, you always expect that, especially with like, you talk about like for necessity, like that for yeah. from, it is just like a bunch of trees. Yeah, you, you get up in your mind and like after hearing about this stuff so much, you're like, oh man, this is a huge, elaborate, massive, yeah. sprawling thing. We see movies like King, sure. uh, Game of Thrones, yeah, it gets, it gets, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the high fantasy stuff. It yeah. kind of gets hyped up in your mind. Your imagination kind of runs wild. But this, this, I mean, from what I understand, from what I saw, this looks pretty close to some of that stuff. It was a pretty, pretty big area. I couldn't even find the exact measurements, so I had to go on like uh, Google Earth or like kind of look at it. But it was like, very impressive. They have three different walls of fortifications just to get into the town, like the town center. But they had a palace there, multiple temples, all kinds of houses, uh, all kinds of building markets. They had a jail for when they c- captured like people they were at war with. They had housing for horses and war elephants. So it was like it was nothing like scoff at. It was, it was it was impressive. So this is in northern India. Yeah, near the like. So this is part of the Rajasthan state of India. So it's, India is kind of broken up into states. And that state's borders kind of like northwestern India. It borders uh, Pakistan. Okay. And Pakistan at this time was not really a country? It was. At this time, Pakistan was yeah, not a country. Pakistan didn't become a country until after World War II when this whole big migration that the British Empire so divvied up the land between you, Muslims and Hindus. This whole okay. horrible thing happened. Okay. So who was, who, what, who were there? I mean, I don't know if you talk about this. I'm sorry for jumping no, ahead. Who were there? Who were they like? at war with or so this would have been so since this is a Mughal ran empire uh it was mostly consolidated consolidated like it was mostly okay it was mostly this time of peace okay. at the beginning of this whole thing when the right. muslims came in they when the muslims came in they're like okay we respect your religion you just need to kind of acknowledge that we are running the this right. this this land okay. so there kind of was a period of peace um but in due time, which we found, like we kind of found out later on when we were doing the Henry Avery thing, it didn't really always last, didn't last that long. So we have this massive fort, uh, kind of geography and layout. It's near a very um, mountainous kind of forested area. It, it sat at a valley. So you've on one side of this a bunch of trees, forest, uh, not flat. It's next to the, I hope I say this right. Have a really hill range that's kind of set in like a valley of that. Uh, it's secluded. So from a militaristic standpoint, that's probably a good idea. Because even at the time, there wasn't much around there. There would have been other forts. Usually people who are also like kind of the same, um, I want to say what the right word for that would be, but like the same mindset that you're not going to be warring with these people. It's kind of a peaceful thing. Right. I'm sure there were skirmishes, and I'll mention them a little bit later that, some things did happen, possibly. And you said it's in a valley? Close to a valley, yeah. So you have a big hill range, and right at the base of it is this fort. Okay. And then beyond there is pretty much flat. Okay. So that kind of gives you an advantage. Uh, atop, throughout this fort, there are lookout points, so they can see, like, who's coming. But I doubt they would really have to worry about people coming in from... Coming over the hill. I yeah, think. right. Yeah. Um, you'd more or less be looking down on the town folk to see what they're doing or to see if anyone's coming in from a distance... Okay. Because you have a pretty good lookout advantage because you're kind of sitting up there. So, yes, it is secluded. So, that could be a good thing because you can see if people are coming or not. You kind of control your own your own uh, stuff there. Modern day, there's a tiger sanctuary nearby. So, no, so now there is. Now there is. Yeah, okay. yeah. There wasn't back then, I don't believe. So, there are three successive fortifications 
and five massive gates. I think there's only four points of entry into this fort. So eventually at some point around the 1700s, this fort was abandoned. Was, and there was a, by all means, it's considered a very flourishing. What, what was the date again? I'm sorry. Around the 1700s. So okay. like early, I think it was around the like early 18th century, so early 1700s. But at some point, this fort was just totally abandoned. People were gone. Uh, a lot of it was at some point destroyed. There are still some of the temples are still erect there. Um, but there's a lot of debris. But people are just totally gone. So the question is, you know, what happened to these people? And there's a lot of lore surrounding that. Uh, a lot of that involves uh, curses. So in the 1700s on until modern day, they still don't have no idea what happened. Not really, no. No, there's a lot of like, urban legends. Because, again, there's even today there's not much around there. So there's a lot of urban legends about locals who live somewhat close to the area. Like this place is pretty, I think it, the closest place is like 20 miles away. So people are usually are probably living on this area, just kind of like local farmers or just you know, something, something along those lines. Uh, so there's not much around there. So to go in some of, some of the lore, the most there's two popular uh, reasons for why the fort was abandoned and what happened to these people. And they, they, I mean, they're the rationality might not be there, but I think they're interesting because some of it deals with culture. Um, possibly religion. So I think it's interesting looking at this stuff because it's a very it kind of like shows what the mindset is maybe of, of people back then or even today. Uh, so one of the one of the pri- one of the most popular reasons is that prior to construction of the fort, before the, the, they even decided to build a fort, there was a a hermit, uh, someone called a sadhu, and a sadhu is basically like a monk. Okay. So they spend their whole lives removed from society, and their whole idea is to remove themselves from material possessions, wants, and needs in order to attain uh, enlightenment. And then, in regards to this, is to be the Hindu religion. So we kind of have, like, in the West, we have kind of the same thing. Monks, they, you know, they live live alone and like they don't, you know, no material possessions, no, you know, sex or anything like that. So this guy was living here. His name is Balu Nath, and he was living there, and he'd go there to meditate. And he was asked apparently by the people trying to build a fort, like, hey, do you mind if you build it? He's like, yeah, that's fine. As long as you don't build anything higher than my house. If anything, as long as nothing casts a shadow on my house. Why that is, I do not know. Uh, but it's said that he's, he, he said, proclaimed this, like, you can do this, but just don't cast anything that will cast a shadow, or build anything that casts a shadow over my house. So this guy was a monk hermit that lived there. Yeah. He's like, Asadu. You can build whatever you want. Yeah. And it's not like he owned the land. He just was near. He just no, lived around there. No, but the, the thing is, though, too, like these are people who are fairly highly, highly revered. Like it's okay. if, like to slight them, it'd be kind of like, you know, slighting your, your own religion because these are people who are, are Hindu. Religious so kind of leaders. Yeah. So the people that were living here and trying to build this, this, this fort in town here, like they weren't necessarily a different religion. Like they understood that this, this, this gentleman was a, you know, a, a very devout holy man. But. So these guys just show up and say we're going to build a fort. We want to build a fort here, and they're they're from they're from this region. Okay, um, and actually the um, the ruler of this region he's building it for his son. I think what I mentioned earlier, uh, but this ruler, his sister was actually the one of the consorts of Akbar. Did we talk about Akbar last time? No. So he, Rangzeb was the, the Rangzeb, yeah, yeah Rangzeb was kind of the, the, one of the last Muslim emperors, uh, because what happened was originally when this all started, when the Muslims came in, they kind of had this agreement with the Hindus, like we're taking everything over, but we'll kind of leave you alone as long as you recognize that we, you know, rule this country. So there's some things that were going on, like so, like for example, in this case, uh, the um, Hindu leader in this particular area, this state. Uh, married off his sister to Akbar, and Akbar had multiple wives. By doing this, you know, when you when you when you kind of do something like this, you, you're strengthening your bonds. Like, I'll give you my sister. You kind of let me do my own thing over here, and then you produce a son. And actually, that that his sister's son ended up being the next okay. uh, ruler of of um, the Mughal Empire. Does that? I don't know if I'm explaining that well, but. 
you, you, it's kind of a common so thing. Akbar's like Akbar's Akbar's son is the nephew of the this current ruler okay. of yeah. Okay. So, so, but he built he built this he built he's building this temple for his other son, who's not you know who's still practicing Hindu and who's kind of through a different wife. But it's kind of you see this during the Middle Ages, like a lot of it's happened a lot of times with France and in England, like which which caused marriages of succession in both areas, like. In order to improve relations, or in order like, hey, we'll we'll stop this war. We want to have these good relations. You can have my sister. You marry her. She'll she'll produce male offspring for you. We'll keep keep things civil, and then down the line, and years, maybe a century later, you have these these wars for succession because like, who actually, who actually mm-hmm. rules these? Th- who actually has rights to these thrones? Yeah, I, I think and I just thought it was interesting because it kind of happens. Like, I don't say it happened in this case, but I didn't I didn't realize this, this stuff was kind of happening everywhere. I was just recently listening and watching something about um, uh, the Rasputin, and they go into the the, the Romanov family, and mm. uh, as Alexei Romanov, yeah, he married Queen Elizabeth's daughter or something like it, okay. it's a British Victoria, Victoria, yeah, yeah, her daughter or, yeah. or someone moved to marry in the right. Romanov Empire. Yeah. Uh, and then everything happened. And that was like the Rasputin story and everything. But it's like really crazy how like the f- you know, like person from Britain came over. Just yeah. they, and they, although they seemed that the story was they thought like truly loved each other, but like yeah. that was like a big deal of like oh we can oh like, right, right yeah, yeah. Rule in one of the most at the time one of the most powerful empires sure the the uh, Russian Empire and was it 1900s yeah or late 1800s so yeah so, you, like just marrying off people here and there yep. to get like. In charge of yeah favor or like just improve relations and stuff like that. So I know that's always kind of cool. Like I I I, I knew that this was happening in the world, but I thought it was kind of interesting that like it wasn't just you know an isolated kind of thing. I would say so. The fort's abandoned. What happened? People are gone. Um, it was a little bit in ruin. So we have Balu Nath, who is the the hermit Sadhu who's living okay. there. So what happens is. They say, screw it, we're going to build this anyways. And they, they're they building the, all these structures that end up casting a shadow over his home. And this is a theory. This is a theory, okay. yes. This guy wasn't around. He's like, yeah, that's what I was. They yeah. did that. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if the Balu is an actual real person, uh, but it said, according to lore, or maybe urban legend or myth, that he was. Um, so they offended this monk, or the sadhu. And by doing so, he put a curse Okay. On the whole town. And what ended up happening was modern day now, where where the fort is the fort now, there's no roofs on any of these buildings. And it's said that be, every time they try to build a roof on any of this stuff, it just crumbles and falls apart. Okay. So they're, they're saying this decay or the inability to build anything since this since this curse happened is one of the downfalls of why these structures aren't up anymore. Why the town couldn't survive. Well, there's some structures that are just, they don't. There are, yeah. Parts missing. Sure. Right. So some of the temples, they sell their, their, their these okay. pristine roofs, but like a lot of the houses, just like the roofs fall apart. The markets is kind of like, you can't, a lot of the, a lot of the um, locals are just like, we tried to build a roof. This falls apart. Okay. What so, do they, do you know what they used for building materials back then? Stone and brick. Okay. Yeah. And for roofs. Same thing. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, okay. So it could be a matter of weight distribution. I, you know, I don't know. But at one point, you know, some of these other buildings worked. They had roofs on them. Right. It's a curse. Okay. So, gotcha. Um, I, especially, you know, this, I don't know if this part of India, you know, we hear about um, part of this part of the world has uh, big monsoons. And, and like, I don't know if that, if it's northern India, I'm not sure what yeah, the location is. But like, is that, you can always think about like natural disaster. Oh, no, of course. Like absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Lala was like, you okay, got this town's cursed. Uh, ever since he do, he, you know, he cursed this town. We can't build anything. We can't keep anything like up and uh, erect. So everything just kind of collapse. So the second curse of why this fort in town didn't second survive. Second curse or set? Good theory. Second curse. There's okay. two curses. Okay. Of why this okay. town didn't survive. They're like, they're apparently like, these are very like well-known and like, Reasons why this 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 place didn't survive. Uh, Princess Ratnavati, said to be like this beautiful young woman who all these men were like in love with and like were pursuing her because she's a princess. So she had all these young young men 
uh, that were suitors trying to get her hand in marriage. She's a princess and she's beautiful. Uh, apparently, there was a. This is where it kind of gets you know a little little out there. There's a sorcerer of black magic who fell in love with her. Okay, again, she's a very beautiful woman. Jafar from Jafar. Aladdin. <laughs> yeah, so okay. he's like, "You will be mine." He created a love potion, and this is where things kind of get a little like iffy. Like at some point, the, she came in possession of this love potion. It was said that she was at a market looking for perfumes or like oils to like you know for scent, scent you know perfume. Uh, but it's said that somehow she got a hold of this potion, thinking it was like a perfume or oil. But somehow she knew whether she was told by a maiden of hers or that she was familiar with, you know, the black arts, that she knew this was, you know, treachery. This wasn't real. So she comes across this potion, realizes it's not like what she's looking for. Like it's not one of these oils. Realizes she's she's being duped. Becomes aggravated, annoyed by this man. Picks up the bottle, throws it at the ground, and he either creates this massive boulder or just lodges a boulder that then rolls to the black sorcerer, crushes him to death. So her, she created the boulder, or his magic created the boulder. So either the fact that the, when she threw the potion at him, when the potion like shattered on the ground, either created this massive boulder, or it hit a boulder that just lodged it, which proceeded oh, okay. to roll towards him. Okay. So it crushed him to death. But apparently, before it crushed him to death, he put a curse on the town. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it checks out. Yeah. 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 Uh, so before he dies, like, I curse this town. And apparently, when, that, when before I die, I'm going to curse yeah. this town. Yeah. Yeah. Pit, yeah. As is, you know, this boulder's crushing yes. him, I guess. Um, apparently, though, within a year, there was a fort nearby, not too far from here. Um, you see, they said that there were Mughals themselves. Because, again, this might be the time when the Mughals and Hindus weren't getting along too well, or just another fort, don't really understand why, uh, came in and apparently almost annihilated this whole town. Is and this cur- a second theory? This is part, yeah, this is part of the the, the theory of the second curse okay. of what happened to these people. Okay. So this, this horde comes in from a, a separate fort or a Mughal empire, because they could have been at this time, like, not on good terms, comes in and completely wipes out all the town, including this princess. Okay, back to the princess. Yes. Okay. So it's said that this town, a lot of town folk, um, and the princess herself are in a perpetual state of limbo and just curse this town. They walk around as ghosts and stuff like that. Because, because the sorcerer cursed, cursed her in, in then, the town. Okay. Yeah. And it's also said that the That's, sorcerer apparently... I mean, it's that, it's so complicated, it has to be true. There's so much... <laughs> but also, apparently, the sorcerer, um, it's reported that they, people see his ghost, and that he won't lift, lift the curse until the princess comes back. Okay. So either way, people think this town is cursed. Right. And okay. before it's cursed. Mm-hmm. So that's two, so, two of the possible reasons, lore, urban legends, myths, the mystery of why this town is vacant... Fell to rubble. These are two two stories that are that's out there. Yes. And okay. That I always love a good curse because you know it really really handles everything <laughs> yeah. pretty pretty yeah. succinctly. Yeah. But yeah. This, I mean, like, I don't necessarily believe in curses, but I think there's something that could you be can't s- prove they're not real. Right. There's also yeah. something to be said about like, you know, say someone believes this. So not my start like believing it or like a predetermined kind of thing. Like that might not necessarily be cursed, but like you start believing it so much that like maybe other people start believing it so much. That Especially like during that we're time. Doomed. Yeah. We're doomed. So like we're doomed to fail. It's, what's the, that term where like you think something bad is going to happen that like you kind of do it to yourself that something bad does happen? Uh, self-fulfilling prophecy? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that's the exact term. Right. Yeah. It, it might not necessarily be a curse, but like pe- people start believing that you get that kind of group mentality can bring it upon yourself. Sure. Yeah. Also, though, like, I I had a hard time finding to see if this is actually what happened when these people, like, so say these people actually did come in and slaughter the whole town and fort, the, the people that were living there. It's possible that could have happened. But it's also possible that it wasn't because of a curse. It just was bad relations. Yeah, and you figure, you figure something like that, if it was this other place that this other group coming in yeah they probably want to make record of that saying like we took them down you would think or they would take over the fort right you would think 
but there's not I haven't I did, I could not find any writing about this this actual event happening. You know, aside like you know, it's all it seems kind of hearsay. And I don't just and it's just a, it's like it seems like a small thing in history. Like, but uh, where ten thousand you said almost ten thousand yeah. people lived, and then they all got wiped out. It's it seems like. There should have been record of this because sure. there's ten thousand people involved. Yeah, I think it was like anywhere from like ten thousand to fifteen thousand people were living there at one point. So it's, it seems it's not just like a real thing where people just you know, what was it hundred people if that just disappeared like. Yeah, it wasn't very many. I this think. is like a you know a self sustaining kind of big, big and we'll, deal. We'll, in future episodes, I hope to talk about Roanoke. I, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. We, we definitely so will. yeah, we'll get more details on that. But this is a, a small area, and, and there's and we there's tons of stories like this around the world. Sure. Uh, but a lot that you don't hear about. That's why I like looking into these little things. Like that's why I thought it was interesting. One because I wanted to look more into the Google Empire, but two is like I have never heard of this. Yeah, doesn't necessarily mean that no one else has, but I just thought it was very interesting. It's considered one of the most haunted sites in all of India, really, and the world. Okay, so I was like, there's got to be something here, you know, something to. And this. You don't hear about it, no. <clears throat> so I think this might be because. The Archer Archaeological Survey of India. This is a government government ran institution. So, wait, so this is your theory. This is what. This is actually this is this is okay. So it's not a theory. This is something that's actually like real right now. So there's it's something called the Archaeological Survey of India. This is a government ran uh, institution. Okay. They prohibit entry to the site of the fort in this town from dusk till dawn. They put up signs everywhere, so you can't go in. Um. Because, you know, so, th- okay, so I, I saw that, right? Like, why would why would they prohibit that? Originally, I was like, well, maybe it's because for safety reasons, as in, like, you know, there might be some falling debris. Right. It's night out. They're next to a tiger sanctuary. And, you know, wild you animals. say that, kid, you know, all the kids around the area are going to want to go there. Yeah. yeah, which apparently happened. Or are they doing this because it's possible that there might be something to this? They might actually believe this. Um, and another I mean, thing, parks I thought, around state parks and in you know sure. national parks are closed. Yeah, 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 you right, know, right, unless yeah. you have special, bears, so, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So it's not like that, but like I mean, it's kind of like that. But apparently, no foreigner is allowed to go in there. Only, Ever, only Indian uh, citizens can go in there. Now, as if uh, you can, you can like say, me wanted to go. We'd have to get special permission. From the government, and I'm to go sure here. you'd have to be some kind of researcher right. or have you know, Docum- you know. documentary and stuff like you that. You can't just be like, I want to go there. Yeah. You know, it's just you got to go there for some kind of education. Sure. Purpose. So the BBC was actually able to go there and film something there as like a documentary. So I actually talked to like specialists and people that actually work these grounds, you know, to kind of like get some factual information about it. Is there any records of any type of architectural activity there? Is is there like oh, any yeah. research there? Oh yeah, they're they're, they're just still trying to determine that. Trying to determine, yes. Um, so we'll go in a little bit. Like, so now we're kind of dealing with, you know, the supernatural, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, but we, I, we will be going into, like, possible, like, okay. more maybe, again, I don't want to dismiss, dismiss any of this stuff, but possible more logical, rational things of what happened here. Non-super, non-supernatural. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that that stuff, you know, the curse and all that stuff happened, you know, 1300 years ago, but things are still happening there now, which I think is one of the reasons why the government was like, yeah, no one coming in after night. So I'm going to go with a couple, couple things here. I thought it was kind of interesting. Again, this is kind of urban legends, locals talking about stuff. And like, we've all, you know, we're, we've all heard urban legends. Uh, but the locals and visitors do actually do get to go there. They talk about when they go in, They'll get that that like feeling of like nausea or paranoia or an actual illness when they go in there. So again, this I mean, this could be just they already know about the area. Yeah, self fulfilling, self fulfilling kind of thing, right? If that's the right word, I'm sure. Yeah. For um, free to you know correct us in the comments yeah. or. Um, also, locals and visitors talk about seeing or hearing lots of strange things coming from the area. Uh, they'll, they'll they'll sometimes hear music playing. Within with on the site, like within the grounds, um, they might hear like dancing, like large groups dancing. Um, there's a story of three men going into the fort at night. Uh, one of them supposedly fell down a well. He didn't die in the well, but his two friends found him, grabbed him, 
We're on the way to take him to the hospital. But they died in a car wreck on that way to the hospital. So, okay, when was this? This, this, was, even... this was like recently. Okay, so like in the past, times. like modern. Okay. Yeah, this is, again, this is all modern, okay. modern times. How they knew these guys were in there, how they knew they were coming. Like, you know, people so say these guys actually did die. This happened. They died in a car wreck okay. to the hospital. Cursed. Who, who, how would you know that, though? How would you know that they were there oh, in the first yeah. place? Yeah. Right? Who, who, yes. So, it's, again, it's one of those, like, you know. They're coming say, from the direction of that town. Right. So, so this is what happened. Who knows? You know, right. It, apparently, they died in, like, some freak auto accident like, trying to go to the hospital. Okay. But how would they know? How would anyone outside that car? Because they're all, you know, had passed, unfortunately. But how would anyone know? They were there. They're going to the hospital. Again, these are all these are all stories, local stories that people talk about. And could these be those stories of like, or this is a story they tell their teenagers so a they don't warning. go driving around there. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. We tell little kids so they don't yeah, go yeah. run around there. Yeah. You know, like what's the one with the like the 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 kids that are at like make out point there a hook on the uh, yeah on the car so, like so don't, they won't go yeah. to make out point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't have unprotected sex, kids. Um, so then there's another one, another urban legend where a group of small boys, apparently, the bribed guard let them go in the fort. But he said, don't go in at night. You don't want to go at night. What do they do? Tell Katie they can't do something. They do it anyway. So they went in at night. And keep in mind, some of the houses that are still there, um, they're all boarded up. Doors, windows, windows are barred. So apparently they went in at night. They were walking down, walking around one of the streets, and they, they looked into a house through a barred window. And saw a lone kid just sitting there by himself, which they thought was a ghost. Okay, little kid sitting in. Okay, yeah, which would be creepy. I would be terrified if I, you know, saw this. And this, of course, if this actually happened, I'd be terrified too. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, anywhere you go to any abandoned thing and you see another person, yeah. it's terrible. And then there's, pl- I mean, plus in your head, you're like working things up in your head too. Like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You you hear things. It's really just right. the wind, like that type of sure. story. Like, well, you. It's always, you know, and you see those like different shows about ghost hunting and stuff. And it's yeah. like, is it the wind or is it someone talking? It's like, well, yeah, who who can say? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my spectrometer is going off the charts. Yeah. It means something's here. And people have gone there. Like, most of them aren't Western people. Most are, like I said, because a lot of foreigners aren't allowed to go here. But they have, like, there are people that go there and will do, like, stay there overnight and, like, record things. And some people claim they see some stuff or yeah. hear some stuff. Or other people are just like, no. But again, so this is this is this is kind of a secluded area. And again, it's by Tiger Sanctuary. There are monkeys that come through there. So, like, who knows what you're hearing? I mean, we do know the close how far the closest town is. So there, apparently, there's like a resort that's. When I was looking on Google Earth, there's a resort that's not too far away, but it is a significant amount of distance away. And so, a resort has to have people that work at it. So that means right. there has to be a town pretty close as well. Yeah, I mean, this, this, the town is in. The resorts in this town, I don't. It didn't look very big, but aside from that, like there's not much around there. And again, I, they might have done this uh, when they built this fort, that sole purpose of being secluded. Because so if they saw someone coming, they like knew that might mean we're going to war, we're going to battle. Right. Um, so I mean, who knows? So again, this this goes back to why the uh, Archaeological Survey of India do, don't want people going in and out there. They don't get sued. They don't get, well, yeah, they don't get sued. <laughs> yeah, because, like, you, you don't know if people are going to go in and, like, vandalize this place around, steal something. I don't know how much, like, artifacts are still there. Um, but who knows what they'd be going in there. So I don't know if it's, like, safety reasons or just more or less preserving the site for more ar- archaeological, like, um, digging and, like, understanding what happened, like you were trying to say earlier. I, I think when it comes to a lot of this type of, type of stuff with – there's a lot of awesome urban exploring channels out there um, – one that comes to mind is Shea, um, another one on the uh, along the beaten path or on the beaten path, unbeaten path. Are they like exploring abandoned? Abandoned stuff. Okay. Right? And there was one of them, I believe it was Shea uh, or Sha. I'm, I'm sh- not sure. He, he Awesome. He like goes, he like goes on us crazy trips to like uh, sometimes by himself, sometimes with people where he'll just go to Chernobyl and yeah. like sneak in Man. and then stay there for a couple of days and sneak out and like, they show you like how you would do it. And it's, it's insane. Yeah. Um, but one of the things he's, he makes reference to, and I, I don't, and I'm sorry if I'm misquoting him or if it's another channel. Um, cause you know, you do that fall into that YouTube hole. You yeah, just yeah. Keep watching stuff. <laughs> and um, they just four in the then, morning. Yeah, like, I gotta get up. I gotta go to work in like <laughs> yeah. an hour. Um, yeah. He says that like, 
some reason, like Europe and, and European countries have like really in and some I, I think it, specifically they mentioned might have been the proper people. That's another amazing channel okay. you should check out. Um, like American um, laws on trespassing are so extreme. Oh, there's yes, yeah. And but like other places in the world, they're not. So are, is it more or less just kind of like you're at your own risk when you do something like this? Like if I think you, they if still, you, something happens to you on your own because they. I think you know that if you fall down a hole or something, then they're gonna have to pay to get you out. They're gonna have to, you know. Yeah. But like, even if you just get caught, it's not as I guess it's not as bad. Oh, all right. I don't know that. In other places, because and and this goes back to like in the reference in the video I, where they were alluding to was, and sorry for mis- misquoting um, that everybody in America like every every scared of getting sued. Yeah. So <laughs> if you fall in yeah. some place, because of the way our laws are set up, the, the way drug like, ads we have. <laughs> yeah. Like if you fall in a hole in an abandoned building in America, then you're probably going to sue the owner of the building instead of being like cops yeah. are not like, you know, they're going to be like, no, just shut up. And the, the, just even if you go to trial, the, the, you know, the judge will be like, why the hell were you in there? But they still use chance that he could, that the owner could get sued. So it's like a lot of things like that, like in European countries, Mm-hmm. I've heard it again, strictly anecdotal evidence based on YouTube videos. This guy went to Chernobyl. Oh yeah, you should check him out. It's awesome. Yeah, he yeah. sometimes he um sometimes he'll just like he usually does a lot of train hopping, which is insane. Okay. There's another one in Vagabond, which I'm really into right now. He's a guy from Russia, and he just like goes into the northern parts of Siberia and stuff himself. Oh, man. And he just rides trains and oh, jumps trains, and he just he uh, hitchhikes awesome but shay does a lot of like train hopping okay. where i'm gonna go through like i'm gonna go through croatia from one end to the other yeah just hop it's it's insane plus i think it was something like this that's cons- supposed to be considered like one of the most haunted places in the world or at least you know in india and india is it's saying a lot because like they have a very very rich history i would imagine there's people who want to do the same thing oh yeah i imagine i and, like you know kids, we, well, these kids really did up. do that like you know that's like a clout kind of thing Put it on, put on TikTok. Yeah, like I'm sure there's tons of videos, on, or maybe, maybe there's not any videos of people exploring this place. There's, there's, yeah, there's quite a few people doing it, and they all like, you know, they bring like their equipment and stuff yeah. like that. But I don't know what, yeah, at least in India, I don't know what the repercussions would be for these people who yeah. do this. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's, there's a lot of like people, that, like, again, going back to these channels, some of them will like go into like a, um, you know, because of World War II, a lot mm-hmm. of underground bunkers and stuff. Yeah. They'll break into them and they'll like command centers and stuff and they'll just like film it. Then they'll stay there for the night. Then they'll wake up and like, the hell? Like it's just insane. Like staying in an abandoned bunker, you know, in the middle of the It's, man. it would be awesome. Yeah. But so yeah, when I was kind of going through some of the stuff, like if I was, if I was before, like I, uh, I remember I went to a Monsville prison in West Virginia and you do like a, like during like Halloween. And they kind of like turn all lights off and lock you in, in like a, a cell. Yeah. And I was like, man, my r- mind's kind of like running wild right now. Cause I'm sure, you know, people, tons of people have died there with horrible things that happened. So I'm like, kind of like when you're in the instances where you like, you know, some, your brain some, starts messing with yeah. your brain. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, this could never be, I don't know if this could be something like this to be proven, but like, who knows what, if this, any of this stuff actually happened, at least with these people going in, in their modern time. Uh, checking this place out, who knows if they actually saw something? There's a thing in their imagination, or it's just like you were saying earlier. This could be a story that you know parents Keep tell their kids, out. like yeah. get out cautionary of cautionary tale. Yeah. So those are kind of like the the supernatural explanations for why this this place failed. But I feel like there could be some logical things of why these people just disappeared. Why this 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 the small town of Fort, not, not sorry, not small, but this fort could have collapsed. So is this is this theories? Or is this your? Idea? These are kind of things I'm coming like okay. things I could think of like what happened, what happened in like in the past with so, other. So this is what you think happened? Yes, possibly. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna write out some things. Tell me what you think. Yeah, because I've just from like studying history, there's certain things that can happen that can cause them like this logically of why a town would just be abandoned and why people would just leave it all of a sudden. War. Battle could be a threat. Possibly the fact that, like, one of the instances after that one curse of the princess, after the the black sorcerer died or the died, he said, "You know, you're gonna curse, you're right. curse." Yeah. And then, like a year later, all these people came in and murdered everybody. Again, like I was saying earlier, like that might, might might because of might not be because of the curse, but 
It just happened that these people came in, they're having issues with people, and they all actually died. Or it could be some other outside force of people coming in and like taking this place out. Because eventually in time, uh, the Mughals and the Hindu, Hin- Hindus were getting along very well. So this could very well be a matter of uh, religious conflict, regional conflict, economic conflict, or just trying to gain possession of this fort. But no one was there to take possession of it. Right. That's a thing. So that's why I was like, maybe that's not the case because if they wanted the fort, they would have stayed they there. The fort and it would have prospered. Sure. So that sounds like that's usually a likely thing. Like we went to battle. We're going to take your fort. Cause who would want a fort? It seems like it's in a pretty good spot. So I was like, maybe that's not why not. Maybe that's not what happened. Plague illness an outbreak, something like that is always a possibility. Would there be, re- but would there be records of that at this time? Mm. Would there be a bunch of bodies? Right. Would they, these people show up and be like, holy crap. Everybody's there's, dead. Everybody's dead. I, yeah, I thought the same thing. Again, there's wildlife there. Not saying, you know, all these people would be like dragged away by yeah. tigers or anything like that. But sometimes a plague happens. If someone gets it, as these start to spread, everyone leaves. But again, okay, would, that makes would, sense. There, would there be yeah. records of that though? Right. I feel like there would be. Or there would be oh, like, yeah, because they, they escaped and then sure, there might they be ran to the next town. And yeah, say, hey, there might be this, you know, this mass migration of all these you know, thousands of people being like, hey, there's a plague going on over here. We need help. Yeah. Lack of, or loss of resources. So they're, again, they're in pre, pre secluded area. Water might have been come an issue. I know there were springs around there, but there could have been droughts that happening during this time. If you don't have water. That's obviously obviously a big issue. Now there's natural springs that there's there's water there now that a lot of the wildlife use, like monkeys and some animals get there at night and use it. But it was said at the time maybe there was a drought going on in this part of India. If that's the case, then that'd be a reason for everyone to leave. It's happened before. So those are some of my theories about like what happened to the people themselves during that time, during when supposedly these curses happened. But what about what happens to the people that supposedly go in there and disappear? So locals saying people go in at night and disappear and never come out again. I, I think it's I always like those stories because it's like, yeah, that guy just went and disappeared. Yeah. And then I buried him in my backyard. Like it's one of those it's like <laughs> it's like back in like when they say um uh, those statistics about like murder rates and stuff like that and, and different times in history and it's like you're walking like you go to part even in America. Let's say it's 1900s, and you're like, "Hey, we're going to vi- that family that lived up there in that house. They're gone. What happened to them?" And this yeah. guy's like, "They just, sold me the house yeah. and they left, man." Yeah. And like <laughs> meanwhile, he left all their buried, stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> yeah. buried like, yeah. and even then, you really have a lot of stuff. But like that type of thing is always crazy because like. Yeah, they just they just left. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they went. They they just said that they didn't care and they left. Right. They sold me their house and they took off. Those kind of things are are crazy, and and they happen there even more so in like unrecorded history or like in this time, you know, even 20, 30, 40 years ago. Right. People just appear. And I was curious too because like people were, like I was reading some of the stuff that so the locals think about like, there's no one really around there unless these people are just like. Kind of hermits themselves, like yeah, living off the land. So I thought it was kind of like, like locals say these kids went in there and then just disappeared, or they're just saying that to keep people out. And I think that I think generally that's what, what's happening is there's a, you know these urban legends that are going on, but at the same time though, again I don't keep saying this, but there is a tiger sanctuary <laughs> that's borders with like, yeah. and people are saying they're hearing yeah. these noises and like you know the monkeys that live there, tigers apparently I think panthers or jaguars get in there too. Like at night, this is when they're this is when they're out doing their thing. And this is like a animals. sanctuary, as in like yeah, and they're and they're just free to roam around. Yeah, so okay. bo- it's a I'm protected a, area that's yeah. for these animals. I, I'm there. sorry, I forgot the uh, the name is the yeah the name is these Sariska Reserve that now borders the that area. Um, I'm I'm assuming it's enclosed, so people like poachers and stuff can't go in there. But I'd imagine these animals are able to get out somehow. Yeah, and. Maybe it's I mean, not maybe, enclosed, you know, maybe, you know, but. But it's a heavily forested area, so maybe that's like right. the natural. They're just, it's, it's more border. of a protected area that they're not allowed to develop. That right. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's probably the case, yeah. 
So if that's the case, then these animals can, you know, come and go as they please, uh, you know, in, in the sanctuary. There was now water, like shallow water sitting there. They might come and, you know, go for a drink. Do some dumb, dumb hop, you know, hop in there. And, and there's still stuff there to this day, like still buildings or buildings. generally yeah, ruins. Yeah, there's, there's structures. There's still structures here. Um, again, a lot of them don't have roofs. Maybe because of this curse or maybe just poor building. They're built out of leaves <laughs> and the leaves, yeah. you know. Um, but it was like their, their building style was pretty advanced back then because it was based off of a a town in Delhi, India, like the, the style. So like okay. some of these pictures that I was looking at was like very, very like impressive. It's not just like, you know, huts or shacks, but like they're they're built up. Stone and stone. And, and, and like okay. some of them are like mansions for like single families. So like it's not, you know, a very it's it's not like poorly built or like right. structures are trying to build. It seems like for the time, it's more advanced. For it's the pretty, time. yes, it was very advanced. Yeah. In that they were built to last because yes. they weren't like moving around. Right. They weren't in the nomadic tradition. Yeah. Of, okay. Yeah. This is supposed to meant to be like a town that would last and the structure is supposed to last too. So that's what I thought was kind of interesting as far as what happened and why some of this stuff is, uh, has fallen apart. Uh, most of it, from what I understand, is kind of in ruins so i don't know if that's just like natural something that happened naturally over time weather um but i don't think this area is prone to, to like since it does border pakistan I don't, and it's not on like the uh the bay it's like northwest so they're not getting monsoons i don't i don't believe so i feel like these structures should be holding up but again it's also been 300 something years yeah. now since then since since they everyone disappeared so people go in here in modern times or what they say is modern times and they're, and they're disappearing. Yeah. No records of where they went. No. Okay. And, and we still have no records of where the people that built the town went. Nope. The 10,000. They apparently videos. just disappeared. So what do you think happened? What is your theory? If you had to guess. Man, I sh- our show about figuring trying mysteries. to answer that question. Yeah. yeah. What do you I feel think? like often we're not gonna be able to answer anything, but well no, we'll I mean give, we're we'll, never gonna be able to answer yeah, anything. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. But we'll but give like, our educated guests. Sure. Uh, That's what we'll call it. I remember man. Let, let me let me I I I, I, d- I don't think I don't so I personally don't believe in curses. So I don't think that's why this place was abandoned. And that's like the left. first thing. That's the last someone time someone says that, and then they're <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> "Then I die in the way." Yeah, <laughs> but some very tragic. And like, I, and yeah, I, I don't want. I don't want to just like. I'm not crapping anyone's beliefs, um, but I do think there's usually a logical reason. It's usually. I think you said this the last episode. There's usually like the the most boring reason, reason is, is the actual reason. Yeah. Uh, so I I think. I remember seeing this on, I think the BBC thing I watched, the one archaeologist said, like, he believed that there's a, a water drought during this time. And that happens, like, if you can't get water, Everybody you can't stay there because there's a secluded area. Yeah. And apparently there's not a lot of water around there. Apparently it's some, a few streams. If that dries up, like, you got to go. You can't grow anything. And they never came it. back? Never came back. And But if they leave, wouldn't they tell someone? That's that's with all my theories I came up with. I just I don't understand. Yeah. Or, or there's no recording of what right. Happened. At least Roanoke, you know. Again, we'll hope to God we go into this. There was a note left, you know. Yeah, but oh, th- even you think about there's mo- there's nothing. If you think about um, uh, Inca and and those yeah yeah in in South America and 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 uh, Yucatan Peninsula, like those um, what was the big one down there? Sorry, Mayan. Mayan, yeah. And and the, and you know most archaeologists or the story seems to be and whether this is true or not is they kind of just spread out and and kind of became modern the modern people of sure. that area yeah. they just left those places right that were my the Mayan ruins they just left and integrated in other parts because of weather systems change dispersion yeah, yeah yeah but there's apparently nothing no record of where they at least with. You know, Mayan civilizations, it seems that there's records of them right. moving, or, I, from what I understand. So I wonder if, I don't know, like, is it, is it a newer endeavor that they're trying to figure out what's going on there? Like, I wonder if that might be the case, or there is a general fear to go into this place. You think as an archaeologist, you really want to, like, this would have been, like, 
looked over, picked over by them. Yeah. Um, just to see what happened out of curiosity, because that's their job. Like what happened to these people, but would, would there be an actual fear maybe based in, you know, um, religious beliefs, Hinduism yeah. or actual curses. Again, that's why I don't want to like crap on the idea of a curse, but could that be why that this place might have been like, look like picked over to figure out what the hell happened to these people? I don't know. And it, and it's the people that do go missing. It's like kind of like the Tutankhamun's curse. Yeah, like that happened. That they have a general understanding of what happened with the, the what that actually means. You know, being that um, the backstory of what happened there. And what became known as Tutankhamun's curse, scientists had a re, uh, understood it to be this, but like you still have this curse that lives on of like what is the curse? And right. You open his tomb and you die. It's was it bacteria? Something that killed the people yeah, yeah, yeah. that opened it was yeah. actually a bacterial thing or something right. with going on in that area. And stuff like that builds is only going to build up over time. It's like well, um, like, that, like it's only going to be the more speculated upon. The myths can be more built upon. The fear might rise and something like that, like for people wanting to do that. But that there was a general concern for that with Dude Comes, you know. Yeah. So like, still to this day, so still, still they talk about that more than actually what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's more well known because it's more interesting. Yeah. What, what, like, what do you when you think of like, like something like this happens? What do you generally think is the cause of it throughout history? Over, yeah, overall, like general, not in this specific case. So you can give me your thought on that, but overall, what do you think? Like. Or one of the bigger factors for why resources happens. For, for uh, I mean, another place that comes to mind is like uh, what's that uh, place in the Amazon, Fordlandia, the, okay. the 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 city that Ford built to harvest rubber trees. Oh, okay. okay. And then someone invented synthetic rubber and like yeah. crap, and they built like one time like the water tower in the town, which is still. I just read an article about it recently. It's still a town. There's still people that live there, and the water tower was the tallest thing in the Amazon at that time. Oh wow. And right. like it's still there and people still live there. Uh, and they're just left with this town that was built and people moved there and like tons of money was spent. And then synthetic rubber was invented, <laughs> invented not too long after. And they're like, well, see you later. See yeah. So like they all just abandoned the place. So there's like mansions and it's like big, you know, for the, for the you know, executives and stuff like that. And we see that in coal mining towns. Oh, sure. Yeah. You yeah, see the same thing. You, yeah. We, you come in for the work. Um, we see it all over the nation. Yeah. And uh, another great youtube channel yeah. um ghost town living yep. you know guy just buys a ghost bought a ghost town he lives there crazy. and he's turning it's amazing he goes into uh, into these mines by like it, it's crazy it, it's insane and it's just like so much stuff so much money was spent so much time right. was spent just to abandon it but you're absolutely right there's a big history of that all over the world of this this happening we're like oh we have this thing we're gonna build here we need we need whatever resources here something better comes along that Leave it. Yeah. We're done. I mean, I'd love, you know, again, I'd love to think that it was a curse of a boulder rolling over. Sure. Guy. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's much more fun. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, can you. Wizard can, dying. Yeah. That's awesome. Because, you know, he's scorned. I, I think my understanding from what I, from your story that I've never heard before, it seems like it was a resource thing. More unrealistic, an invading army. You know, that type of thing. I think an invading army makes a lot of sense, too. They mm. come in, they wipe everybody out, maybe for religious reasons. Sure. Wipe out. But then they would want to promote that. They want to tell right. talk about that. And they would use the fort for their own. Yeah. They would take everything out. Yeah, because like, was there know, still stuff left victory, there? Uh, uh, the victor goes to spoils. Yeah. And the victor writes history. So, like, why wouldn't they take advantage of that? That's what I thought was kind of And why wouldn't they... T- and if it was a religious thing, why wouldn't they topple the temple? Sure. Um. What resources makes a lot of sense. Um, plague, I don't uh, plague. I don't really think that makes a lot of sense because I'm sure there'll be records of bodies being found. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It depends who kind of is there any record of who kind of stumbled who upon comes it and across like, that. Hey, not not that or, I saw. Yeah. Or who comes across it and been like, hey, where do those people go? Like, who asked that question first? Right. What happened? in in this town so i mean someone had us come across this right like or was it just like they all kind of moved <laughs> to this other town and they all kind of like oh yeah they're all kind of like oh yeah this something crazy happened up there but yeah. it's really like his grandfather moved down to this town because there's water here right you know was this other town just all the people from that town just like what happened with mayan civilizations mm. did they just move to the resort and we're like oh resort's here cool <laughs> like oh there's 
Yeah, the, we don't want to live there, man. There's yeah, stuff I'm pretty happened. sure the closest place is now like a, a town, but it's, it's now a, a resort. resort. Town. Yeah, and it, I think it was like I was looking at the Google Earth. It was a significant amount. So they built a ta- they built these guys come in. They build a fort. A king gives it to us. Is for us. It's for a second second son. Yeah. Okay, so he builds a fort, for, it, yeah. which means it has some kind of significance. Which yeah, means so you it can't has, just it has a palace. Has yeah. all these temples. Has a and market. Then, Entertainment area. Is there any story what happened to him? Oh, uh, the second. What happens with him and his he, family, his lineage? Does he go on to rule anything? Does he die in battle? Does he move he became, to Delhi or something right. because he, you know, he gets a job with or he gets in charge of something else? So I think if you follow that lineage of like what happened, okay, where did he go? Did he right. just leave? And what happened with? Okay, then if he leaves. Was everybody else like, no one's in control now? Who's in charge? Yeah. Was it like, all oh, the leaders are leaving? We better get the hell out of here. Something's going down. Right. So it, it, it eventually, like, I don't know how Mealy was after this. I can't remember. But this area that they're, I think that I believe they're in, ends up becoming Jaipur. Uh, Jaipur. Jaipur, yeah. So. Is that, oh, that one of this is the story about, um, uh, the Royal Detective. Um, <laughs> what? Oh, what the hell? The Royal Mira, the Royal Detective. This cartoon. Wait, on who? Disney. <laughs> Mira, the Royal Detective. It's a Disney cartoon my daughter watches. It's about this Royal Detective in Jaipur. Okay. That Jaipur, mean, I, India. Yeah, that's the, like so. Oh, I wonder if this, it's the same place. So once, okay, so I do know. I, so I, I can tell you I know what happened okay. because so the Royal Detective, right, she <laughs> finds out there's all this stuff going on and she helps the queen, Queen Shanti is her name. And so King, Queen Shanti is uh, hires this little girl to be the royal detective for the whole town. And that's probably why the town went to hell because they hired a little, a little girl yeah. to be a detective <laughs> yeah, hey, and kid. solve them. But also, also, also um, the sheriff is a cow. Obviously D- you important. Know. Yes, to the, yeah. yeah. Um, Sacred. And he, but the cow handles business. All right. He just says, you know, he takes everybody to jail. It's usually the same two jackasses that are like, <laughs> they dress up, they put mustaches on one episode. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's can't tell who you are now. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a great sh- the music in that show is awesome. I can tell you that. Uh, the I love how the that culture has like their their media is always like more dancing and songs oh yeah and stuff. Bali it's, yeah I think yeah, it's Bollywood, just an awesome yeah, yeah. yeah it's an awesome concept or like they're that kind of like history or that kind of uh the way they handle their media is awesome okay and that's and that's comes through in the show you should watch everybody should watch it it's is this something show. you watch i have, on your own? i mean i have to watch it <laughs> i watched every episode like 40 times what, why because she watches it nonstop. i mean like she used to not recently but she she's over it now <laughs> well every new season's like new like okay. a new thing but like queen shanti oh sorry uh, I, I i don't Jalpur. i might have missed you saying you you watch it with your daughter <laughs> I was like, so you're just watching this on your own? No, I think I missed. I think I missed the part where you watch it with your daughter. I was like, so you just watch this show on your own? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was really interested in <laughs> learning the history of India through its cartoon show. There you go, man. Learning is learning. Uh, so yeah, I, I do know at some point um, the so it's now known as Jaipur. Jaipur, yeah. Okay, and it's, it's still in the in the in, in the uh, state of Rajasthan. But the area that this is in uh, eventually did change over. Like the rulers that were in this particular area, I can't remember the name. I'm very sorry, but like they eventually like fall out of power, and it eventually turns into Jaipur. Okay. So I don't know exactly what happened to Mato Singh, the one this is this 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 uh, fort's built for, but I'd be curious to know that. Should look into that. Well, so I think. Um, I would love to know more about, about this. Uh, this this seemingly like it seems like you say a fort, and then it's actually a whole town and things like yeah. that. So that's really interesting. Um, that, and, that, and actually, that that there is no record of what happened. And right. again, what I think, obviously, the most boring thing, resources. Yeah. And you believe? I believe the same thing. Yeah, I, it's it's fun to look at, like the supernatural or like these these fun urban legends or myths or uh, curses like that's a fun thing to look at but I think again it goes down to the kind of the most people gotta eat people yeah, gotta drink right 
the most obvious answer. Not all the time, but. So does that wrap up our story of the. Bangor Fort. Bangor Fort. What happened to Bangor Fort? What happened to these people? Yes. What happened to the roofs? <laughs> the roofs. <laughs> What about the poor wizard who, who the princess did not love? And it's really that's I think there's another story of this where that's like it's from told from his perspective where he's like the one it's like he we're like looking at him is like, oh, that poor, oh, the guy. poor guy. So um, I want to say thank you, Jordan, for bringing this to to my attention. And yeah, I just thought it was something different, something I never heard of. And it kind of got on this when we're when I was researching stuff from the last episode. So I don't think it's kind of a neat thing we're doing here. Yeah. And uh Please um, bear with us with the logo. We're still working out that only being our second episode. Please go back and listen to the first episode on Henry Avery or where is Henry Avery's treasure? Will we discuss that? Um, The episode zero, which we posted about ourselves, who we are, why we're doing this, the who, who, what, why, when, and how, and all that type of stuff. Um, we do have social media accounts at this point. If you're listening to us, like if you're listening to this thing. Oh yeah, this will all be done already. Yeah, we <laughs> have them set up as far as like we, we're still working out logo, website, all that type of stuff. So by the time you actually hear this, that stuff will kind of be figured out and be be done. Please check the notes, uh, the show notes. I'm checking the, the uh, podcast feed or anything like that to find the links to those things. Uh, like all of our social media accounts, our website, and um, and and that about wraps up this episode. So I want to say thank you again to Jordan for being here, my best pal, and your best pal now. And uh, we will be back soon with another episode. Please, if you have ideas for episodes, please uh, you know yes. reach out, yes. uh, email us, uh, comment on our videos, anything you can do to connect with us. And we would love to hear about more. I would love to hear about more like um, feed. We want some feedback too. feedback too. Yes, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But also mysteries that are not really known. You know, this one was an awesome one because it's not really known. So the common mysteries that everybody knows about, we, we're trying to not do those as much, but we really want to dig into the more unknown, more local mysteries, um, especially in other parts of the world. Like we said at the end of, mis- of episode one, Different parts of the world are really interesting. Yeah. You know, China, India, these things are really, these parts of the world are giant areas. Global. Of, yeah, lots of interesting stories that all have their own mysteries and um, are really interesting to discuss. So that's about it. Uh, we hope to see you soon and thank you for watching us. This has been the Mysterious Pals show and we will see you again soon. Stay mysterious. Stay mysterious.